Now here's a simulator game that offers more than a few surprises. Of course, if Construction Simulator were accurate, it would have workers catcalling at girls as they walk past, builders would drink copious amounts of tea, and cities would be jammed with traffic as construction zones lay empty. But alas, Construction Simulator plays things a bit more straight. And I have to say, it more than impressed me were it not for a few frustrating game mechanics. But is that enough? to ruin the overall enjoyment. Well, grab yourself a hard hat and let's have a chat. Welcome back to Cockney Gamer and a big, big thank you to all of you for your support. I'm not sure if we're gonna do it on this video or the next video, but we are close to 1,000 bloody subscribers. Reggie and the boys are humbled. So thank you very much. So we all know how these simulator games play out. Janky graphics, terrible sound, poor animations, limited game options, poor presentation, and rarely any voice acting or cutscenes. Well, call your mother and tell her the bloody good news, people, because Construction Simulator just changed the rule book on how polished a simulator game should be. You start out by selecting your character and of course I made myself little Regietta, a female who takes no bullshit from the construction workforce. You then create your company name and indeed a starting city. Now I chose Almighty America where I'm convinced the town is loosely based on Long Beach in California but maybe those more well travelled than little Reggie can tell otherwise. And from here you start out on a tutorial where you talk to a local town guru called Ape, who could easily be mistaken for a paedophile. He shows you the ropes in terms of traversing the town, using basic construction machines, learning the controls and all that nonsense. Now Ape is a funny old fellow as he's going to rock up at any location at any time of day. He just stands there staring at the world as some indestructible force to be reckoned with. As you can see, my car does no damage to him. What a lad. The first thing that hit me though is just how well polished the game was and I'll say more on that for the graphics section later on but just like your first ever Tommy Tank it came as a nice surprise. Is that a hair gel? The next big positive to discover was the sheer variation on offer. I could not believe the number of vehicles that you could drive and own, all from different manufacturers and it sets a tone of the game taking itself seriously. A very good start boys and girls. Now the start of mission that comes from good old pedo Hape, he asks you to do some basic construction jobs, but they're all varied enough to be interesting, such as digging a trench, paving a car park, lifting up some letters for a hotel construction. Now sadly, you cannot pick up and choose the letters as I would love to have put the word face in the world but alas there is decorum in this construction industry and that tutorial can feel grindy and drawn out but stick with it people because you're going to be rewarded for your efforts as you open up the game proper you'll be able to rent out vehicles level up your character give yourself perks such as negotiating a better deal or indeed taking out contracts and building projects to earn some side cash however the core game here is the campaign missions a selection of building projects to revamp the city where there looks to be a finale of building a bloody theme park now you have to give the boys and girls credit here when making this game it's a bloody construction simulator after all and they could have been lazy and just said build this bullshit project and f off will ya without giving you a purpose but there is so much variation and interesting little jobs to do that you never find yourself saying not this bloody job again and very few simulators i feel have achieved this level of diversity. The next call out here is to discuss Hape's pedo playground, which I'm just going to call an LA knockoff for now. The map, it's big, it's got plenty to go see and discover with buildings such as vehicle dealers, a gravel dealer, material dealer, gas station, among lots of other things. Proper good stuff it is. Now with all these positives, it would be wrong of me to not call out some of the nonsense and it really started to frustrate Reggie no end. Firstly, it's the bloody control system. Each vehicle has a different scheme, which is fair enough given the variation of the vehicles, but I started out on the PC and I used the keyboard and mouse and frankly people, 
it was a total mess. For example, on one vehicle, you had to press the letter Y and the letter C to reverse backwards in a straight line. Now just look at your keyboard, people. Look at where the letter Y is in reference to the letter C to reverse a bloody vehicle. What did we have to do to deserve this kind of torture? Now the reason they offer different letters is to allow each individual track on the vehicle to have its own throttle but honestly it makes it all convoluted and with each vehicle the controls slightly differ on top reggie here thinks a simple forward and backward button would have sufficed but there you go now once i swapped the control scheme for my xbox controller reggietta's life became infinitely better but it still felt as complicated as a peace deal in the Middle East. My next big issue is the bloody driving, especially in that opening tutorial where you have to drive to each location everywhere and it sucks donkey balls because the driving is not fun, it's not interesting in the slightest and even though slow, I feel all vehicles drive the same speed. Even the bloody car you get as a turning circle of the Titanic. You could drive through people, you could smash into things with little consequence and hardly any damage is caused to your vehicle. The only thing that's going to get you in trouble with the bacon is when you run a red light and the police fine you $100, which is nonsense when you've got 50k sitting in your bank anyway. Now thankfully, once you visit the location, you do get the opportunity to fast travel there forever more, which definitely takes out some of the monotony. But that in itself leads to another problem, people. You see, when you start a contract, you'll need to grab the vehicle from the dealer, which results in traveling there through the menu. Then you go get the material for that said vehicle, such as concrete, which usually means opening up the menu again to fast travel. Then you drive that shit to the construction site, which means opening the menu once again to fast travel. And you might have to do this with three or four vehicles for just one one construction job now that's potentially eight to ten trips and so you end up finding a lot of your time is either a driving about the place or b stuck in menus as you fast travel continually what i'd pay to just pay a fee and have all the vehicles needed delivered to my construction site with one button press so that i could actually get on with the building part and cut out all that drivel now in terms of building stuff it's all very passive the biggest challenge you face is fighting that control scheme versus actually having the skill to complete the task plenty of times reggietta she found herself proper messed up just by pouring concrete all over some local council green project without penalty and so i became to accept my fate as a dodgy builder as very little effort was placed into the care and accuracy of a job but instead my mantra was just get the job done by hook or crook and you know what after a solid few hours people were playing this i realized is actually up there with some of the most relaxing games you can get such as american truck simulator you see construction simulator doesn't demand a lot from you in fact it's a pretty laid-back affair giving you plentiful of cash allowing you to take a more passive approach to gameplay the stunted driving and movement breaks up the gameplay a bit too much for my liking and the controls will cause you a brain aneurysm but if you are willing to stick with it you'll find the gameplay incredibly rewarding after a long day arguing with your lovely wife one additional thing to add here is that other the new lovely people and Johnny Two Shoes, Reggie doesn't actually have many mates. You see, with no mates, you can't play with other people. But there is an online multiplayer offering here. And I must say, I imagine if you did have mates, it adds a whole new dimension to just chilling out, talking nonsense whilst doing nonsense. Now, as for graphics, I always come into games of this nature with very low expectations. But my word, people, here we have a simulator game with quite a lot of polish. The vehicles are modeled really well with all the moving parts in the right places, with even the wheels bumping over curbs correctly to simulate the suspension. And of course, you could drive onto dirt and it kicks up accordingly. Likewise, there's a day and night cycle once you get through that pedo H tutorial. And so as the night falls, you'll see a layer of fog settle across the city and it's done in such a way that it actually adds some atmosphere versus what other simulator games do which is use fog to hide popping and even your own character looks half decent and animates not too badly at all where they run with purpose and even look good close up I was also impressed with the level of detail in the cities and towns with planes flying over or debris fluttering in the wind 
Textures also play a key role where it's easy to tell when asphalt has been flattened or not. I mean, people, I could go on and on here, but for a simulator game, I'm more than impressed where this settled and I have no complaints. The only issue you might come across is optimization where you'll see some stutters. Even on my 3080 that Johnny Two Shoes got me, I still cannot run the game at max settings on 4K. So just be wary of that. Sound is also a big hit where trucks sound beefy or construction materials clank and make the right sound based on whether it's wood, stone or metal. You'll hear car radios thumping out in the background as you drive past them or birds singing in the distance as you enter the countryside sections. Gravel, it sounds like gravel. Roads, they sound like roads people. The engines I think sound a bit shit and musically it's a bit meh. But it never detracts away from the overall soundscape on offer here. So Construction Simulator has plenty going for it. Yes, it has some pacing issues and at times maybe feels a bit drawn out, especially when it comes to moving around the map. And yes, the control scheme is a pain in the arse, but graphically is actually a quite a looker that will keep most of you as wet as the concrete you lay. The sounds are decent and above all else, it just feels like it accomplishes what it sets out to do, which is make you feel like a builder who builds shit. And my Cockney gang is done in a way that is cathartic. It allows you just to sit back and chill. Now, usually I play these games to review for you lovely folks and never return to them. But here, I feel I've got myself a game that I'm gonna load up when the warfare of London gangs gets a bit too much for me and the boys. And I've got to say, I couldn't put a higher praise on it than that. Love to you all. Reggie out.